Could you imagine being a small mammal that lives its entire life up in the tall trees, never coming down to the ground for anything? Well, there is such a mammal, and it lives here in our forest in the northwest part of California. And uh, I'm going to so show you one of the only signs that trackers may ever find of this animal because its entire life is up here in the treetops. And they nest there, they, they make babies up there, they feed up there, they get water from fog drip and from rain, they never have to come to the ground. So, how does a tracker know these animals are around? Well, let's look at a really cool sign. So this doesn't look like much, does it? Just a pile of sticks, right? Actually, this is a track, or a sign, rather. And this is the only sign as a tracker that you might find that will indicate the presence of an animal called a Sonoma tree vole. In parts north of here, it's called the red tree vole. But here in the part of Northwest California where I am, it's called the Sonoma tree vole. There are two different species of these. And its entire life is lived up in the tops of the trees. They never have to come down to the ground. Now what is this? Why does this indicate this animal? So the unique lifestyle of the Sonoma tree vole means that it has to have a food source that it can get to without coming down to the forest floor. And in this case, that's what this is. This is the remains of its food. So this is every single one of these little tiny things are a resin duct. And they come from these tiny little needles of the Douglas fir. There's a scale in millimeters. Those are about an inch long. If you were to use the inch scale, maybe a little bit less. So Douglas fir needles, each one of them has two little resin ducts. And that's what the squirrel is discarding here. It doesn't eat them, it discards them. Let me see if I can get a close-up of a Douglas fir needle and show you. Okay, here up close are the needles of a Douglas fir tree. And you can see that there are several ridges in them. Those ridges are where the resin ducts are located. So the resin ducts actually transport um, nutrients to the needle, which is essentially the leaf of the tree. So it needs to have chlorophyll and it needs to have water and sunlight to make its food. And inside each one of these needles are several of these little resin ducts which are kind of like veins almost. That's what these are essentially. They transport materials within the needles of the tree. And in a way these resin ducts are sort of like the uh, stringy stuff in celery that you discard when you eat celery, right? Nobody wants to eat the stringy stuff. It's not that good. Um, you want to eat the part of the celery that's edible. And that's the same thing that the squirrels, I mean squirrels, <laughs> that's the same thing that the Sonoma tree vole does, is it eats everything that is not this little resin duct. So it eats all the parts of this needle and discards the parts that are not edible, or apparently not a good texture. So the, the needles are green when they're eating them, of course, um, they don't like to eat the dead ones, I don't think. Um, they live up in the trees all their life, and so their food is this. These little needles from the Douglas fir tree. And uh, they remove the fleshy part of it to eat, and then get rid of this part. Now what happens to the ones that they get rid of? Do they drop them to the forest floor? Well, not really, because as you notice, this is in a big clump. So even though this looks very uh, boring and, and just, you know, like some random thing you'd find on the forest floor, it's actually pretty exciting from a tracking standpoint because this is the only sign that you find of these creatures. So what they do after they finish consuming the fleshy part of those needles is they drop the resin ducts in a pile. And over time, it piles up and accumulates and that is what they use as a nest. So they pile up this stuff, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of these needles 
are consumed and then they leave behind those little ducts and they stand on them and eat more and as they do that they discard more of these they also will deposit scat and that helps to glue them together and then they burrow into it and that's their nest so not only are they using the Douglas fir tree for food they're also using it for shelter so this is the shelter of the Sonoma tree wool this is the remains of a nest and you know when we get windy days these things can blow out of trees and that's probably what happened here or a predator ate the vole. These voles are very common food for the spotted owl which lives in our forest here as well as other owls and any other predator that can catch them because they are small, they're rodents. Um, they're not a very big animal but um, they are food for a lot of animals that can catch them and because they live up in the treetops most of their predators are going to be things like owls and they they um they do have uh, a network of trails that they use up in the trees so they use the branches to get around up there they wander around in the branches they'll go out they'll harvest a stick and that stick will have um, a whole set of Douglas fir needles and they will bring it back to their nest site sit on top of this feed on it and then when they're done they'll throw the stick away but they will leave the ducts that that they've just fed upon um, the part that they didn't eat and then they burrow into it and nest so this stuff is very fine in texture and it's very lightweight but accumulations of it create a mat sort of a something that's like cloth almost I can't pull it apart you know it's it's it pulls apart but not easily and uh, that provides little dead air spaces inside and that gives the uh, animal some insulation so when they're ready they burrow into it and they make themselves a little nest chamber inside there and that's where they live so this is part of a nest and I'm assuming it either fell out because a predator attacked it or because a windstorm knocked part of the nest out the nests are kind of hard to find they can be at the ends of the branches of a Douglas fir tree or they can be near the trunk but they're very far up the trees usually because our trees can be hundreds of feet tall here and often not visible to humans without binoculars so as a tracker this is a very exciting thing to find it's not a very common sign and I estimate that I've found less than a dozen of these in 25 years here so uh, it is a pretty exciting sign to find and confirms the presence of this animal in this forest which is an indicator of forest health because these little voles feed other animals so they're part of the ecosystem and they're a very important part of this forest environment here so as a tracker look for these and it it doesn't look like much and but it actually is there's a whole story that goes with these little tiny piles of red ducks on the forest floor. Hope you enjoyed.